there is no other job in the world where I get to learn as quickly as I do in this job and, there, and, and create new and different and exciting things as often as I want. Um, and so like, you know, there's downsides. Like sometimes I don't really want to be video editing, but it's always worth it. My name is Isla Foxlin. I am a creator of things on the internet. I make stuff. <laughs> that was like the least descriptive thing I could have said. I am an engineer and a maker on YouTube and I am based in Los Angeles, California. Am I like wiggling too much or am I good? There's kind of two stories on why I moved to Los Angeles. One of them is that I was given an offer to come back to Disney Imagineering R&D to start April of 2020. And so I like set all the plans in motion to move and then the pandemic happened, like the whole team got laid off. And so my offer got rescinded, but I was like, screw it. I'm gonna move to California anyway. Coming from Ohio, I was like super shook by how interesting people were and like how easy it was to make friends that were inspiring and passionate and like chasing their dreams, whatever those dreams may be. Like you can roll into a bar in LA and someone left their hometown to chase a dream that seemed impossible, whether it was in aerospace, whether it was in music, whether it was in creative technology or like the main, like acting, modeling. Um, but everyone is doing something really exciting and I, like, I wanted to be a part of that. We are at Casey's Crepes Cafe in Marina Del Rey, California. I like to come here a lot when I have friends in town um, or when I'm stressed because there's a lot of sea lions and we'll like take a walk down the marina with their bubble tea. Uh, bubble tea is the love language of my people, for the record. <laughs> I have a degree in technically general engineering with a concentration in mechatronics and creative technology from Case Western Reserve University and a minor in studio art. <laughs> me has Emma Jimmy Ring degree. <laughs> I am a full-time creator, yeah. And have been since zero subscribers. I think I have trouble focusing on things, so I've done a lot of like really strange things. Um, but I was one of those tech kids that dropped out of college when my startup got VC funding. Um, so I left and did that for a little while, and eventually I closed down my company, went back to school, finished my engineering degree. Um, while I was there, I also competed at Miss Ohio, and I joined the salsa team for no good reason. When I finished college, I founded a nonprofit, a 501c3 organization that was focused on lowering the barrier to entry for women and minorities in engineering, STEM, making, and the trades. And um, I did that for a couple years, and then when I got the offer from Disney, I kind of put plans into motion to move out to LA. At the same time, an agency reached out to me and was like, hey, would you be interested in doing YouTube full time? And it would be really helpful if you moved to LA for that. And I was like, sure. I'm also a pilot. Every pilot has to loudly announce that they're a pilot directly to camera. I'm not supposed to be talking directly to camera, but like. I am so deep over my head. I have a personality flaw that I think, I don't know if it's a flaw. Um, it has definitely led to my like career being the way that it is, where I don't, start questioning whether or not I can accomplish something until I'm halfway through it already. Um, like I don't think, I don't think through an entire project before I start it. I just kind of jump in and I'm like, I know I can figure it out. Um, but sometimes that leads to like really stressful situations where um, I've bit off far more than I can chew. And well, we know how that ends. <laughs> This table was like my first woodworking project. I think I made it in 2019. I've not been doing this for very long. Um, and I lived in Ohio at the time, so I just like went to a local dude selling slabs on Craigslist and got this, actually this whole section of trunk. And I split it with one of my friends um, and I turned this piece into a table. There's a lot of imperfections, but this is again like, this was my first woodworking project, my second one was mandolin. So like I really like to just jump into things, even if I don't know what I'm doing. Um, 
because I think the most valuable skill I have is trusting myself to like figure it out. <laughs> I feel like the really cop-out answer is I'm like half Asian and half Jewish. And so like, I was only loved if I did it extra. <laughs> I think actually some of it is I am an only child and my parents worked a lot growing up. So like I was very much a latchkey kid where I'd like be home alone a lot and have, and we didn't have a TV. so. To kill time, it was like I could read books, I could tinker around and like make stuff, or like I had to entertain myself. And so a lot of what I do now as an adult is just like the grown up version of entertaining myself. This was like my second woodworking project, so it was like right after the table. You can see how much I did not know about everything. Um, it's made out of butternut. I bought the neck, so I didn't make the neck. I tore it out a bunch of times. This was like I went the wrong way on the router table. I didn't know what I was doing. Um, just like a bunch of marks that I didn't sand out, like tons of burning. But overall, and it, it plays in tune, so I don't know. And then this was my most recent instrument. I'm really proud of it. I don't know, the professional bass player I hired to play it, he said it played better than a lot of the professionally made basses he's been asked to demo. on. It's like... Yeah, so now I am a fully degreed engineer who just shits around in her garage all day. <laughs> this year's been a pretty rough year. Like, I, um, my friends have started joking that like the, the, the writers for Xyla Fox in season 2022 need to cool it and save something for next season. Like, started the year homeless and then I got COVID and then I got long COVID and then I got robbed and then I like collapsed and went to an ER in Missouri and then I um, have been dealing with like a bunch of other stuff and then my landlord tried to evict me illegally and it's like, it just has not been stopping. So I've only published two videos this year, which hurts a lot. I've been kind of keeping the business afloat with Instagram ads. They are good, honest work, um, but they are not why I live. Like I live to build things and then share the things that I make. And I now have this beautiful shop that I love to be in and I love to create in. So I'm trying to be nice to myself on how my production schedule has gotten really sketchy. <laughs> It's like the realistic version of epoxy beach waves. <laughs> this is a local beach, so it's like not, there's never any tourists here. Um, it's in West LA, kind of near Playa del Rey. I come here when I really can't be in the office anymore. <laughs> the ocean doesn't care what else is happening in the world, so it's, it's very grounding. I am currently finishing up what is the largest project that I've ever done, which is a teardrop trailer. I built it uh, in three weeks, which was insane. Um, I did 180 hours of like physical labor on it, and that's not including all the time I spent at my computer ordering parts, designing, design work. Um, and then I had a bunch of people coming, like friends and stuff coming in to help. And like, I think in total it was 380 person hours of work. Um, in under three weeks. I'm really tired. So this trailer has been on my bucket list for a really long time. Even though I was running out of time, I don't think I skimped on, on things. I still have my like really big stargazer window, the roof vent, it's solar panel, solar powered. Put the time in and I made the swoop. I did cherry, this is all fiberglass. I think part of my YouTube journey has been learning to do things on my own. Coming from an engineering background, it's more like you're working in a group, you have a team, something like that. Um, whereas now, it's kind of like I am, I have to wear all of the hats and do all of the things 
and this project like absolutely pushed me to my limit in that in that regard it was wild it still is wild i haven't put windows in <laughs> as you can tell <laughs> every time someone asks me this question i have a different answer and usually I say like my canoe because it was it was the first and only project I've ever done with family. But I think my answer right now is the rocket. Like the rocket that's behind me. And not because it's a project I'm particularly proud of or um, like it's a cool project. It wasn't a particularly difficult project. It was not like a landmark project for me, I think. Um, but in building that project, I met some of my best friends and I like I didn't realize how impactful that was project importance almost always comes down to the people involved for me so like I've done some projects that on my own that I'm really proud of and are really good technical work um, and they don't make my list because I didn't meet cool people or get to spend like quality time with people that I love as a result of them I don't know if this is usable footage, but I got no other solutions. Did I get them? I totally torched the varnish, but worth it if they're dead. They look got. What do you think? How did they just move in? My house just got fumigated. Why is being an adult so hard? <laughs>really nebulous goals like I want to grow I want to you know release like like a product line or have a conference or write a book or something like all of these things are like loosely dreams but I think some a little bit of like a tidbit of stability is probably my number one goal <laughs> this career is very much it's like the person who jumps into a or like a, it's like the artist who just jumps into an audience and like expects people to catch you. Um, it's kind of like, like I feel like I'm just being carried by all of the people who support my channel and it's it's a very wholesome feeling. Like I, ha it, I, I've talked to other creators about this. There's like a gratefulness that's very difficult to put into words. When something terrible happens to you, it's like a really good way to find out how supportive you are. And when I was couch surfing in December and January as I was looking for a new place to live. Um, I stayed with like over 20 friends in like a bunch of different places. I stayed in like a hammock, I stayed in um, someone's backyard, I stayed in a hangar, I stayed in like a trailer, I stayed in like all kinds of funky places and people were just opening their doors and being like, how can I help? And I have like so many friends that will just pop up when, or if I haven't heard from me in a little while, I'll be like, hey, is everything good? Like, you haven't chopped a finger off and bled out in like your shop floor yet, have you? But I'm really lucky to have built a, like, a really powerful family of friends out here. I'm very grateful to them. Out of all of your talents and your abilities, why do you prefer working with your hands? Um, wow, I've never thought about this question. I think the world makes more sense when you are physically holding it. <laughs> Tangible physical things mean more to me than data in a computer. And I've always felt that, like, I, um, even when I was doing my engineering degree, I was trying to go into robotics. I wanted to be an astro roboticist. And 
I ended up doing mechatronics instead of robotics because I wanted to focus on the like mechanical and electrical systems and not the software just like it didn't speak to me the way that everything else about engineering does because I can hold it. <laughs> I think a lot of people get really attached to the things they make because they made them and so they there's like an amount of blood, sweat and tears that go into that. But I really like to beat the shit out of what I built. <laughs> like I put so many hours into this boat and I want it to get beat up. I want it to get used. Like I put a lot of time into making my rocket really beautiful and I want to fly it until it crashes into the ground at 180 miles an hour because I screwed something up. Like I don't, it's not that I don't get attached, but I think my attachment is very functional. Like I want things to be used and that's why I make them is so that they can exist in the world and like have purpose. Um, so this is a cedar strip canoe, which means that every single one of these strips is an individual piece of cedar that I cut and routed and glued up and then shaped and planed and fared. And so the whole hull is cedar, carbon on each side and the, the gunnels and the thwart and the seats are all cherry. I also think working with your hands, it feels productive. And I have a lot of trouble focusing on things when I'm sitting down at a computer or something. Whereas if I'm building something, it's like everything makes sense. It's like there's no problem that is unsolvable. Computers are complex. People are complex. Wood is a dead tree. <laughs>